Well, look at here. What are y'all doing out here in the woods? I don't know who you are, but I'm Hickok45, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful hills of Middle Tennessee, the home of Dolly Parton and Alvin York. And yes, beautiful. Just look behind me. It's a beautiful hills and it's a beautiful Tennessee. And it's a beautiful time of the year to be out getting some exercise on a mountain bike, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And here I am yakking at you again. Some of you were asking about the next shooting the breeze. And I guess I have not shot the breeze lately. Uh, but we just did a uh, little bit of yakking at, uh, in the gun culture radio show. Uh, we're at Bud's in, well, speaking of Dolly Parton, in her neck of the woods in Sevierville. Hope you caught that and listened to that and watched that. We had a nice turnout, some great folks, and uh, some good questions you know, from the audience of strange people that showed up. Yes, anybody who views our videos is strange, that's why we like it. Just kidding, but uh, uh, so what am I gonna talk about? Well, first of all, I thought I'd come out in the woods uh, while the weather is still decent and just as a change of pace, do one out in the woods, okay? I've been spending a lot of time on my mountain bike and some time on my new road bike, if you saw that video I posted on Facebook. But I've always, uh, well, I'm always able to get on the mountain bike, almost. Unless it's just sloppy, muddy, uh, you know, just really bad weather because I don't have to think about cars and, uh, you know, as long as it's dried out a little bit, I'll take off on this thing because uh, the trails we made around the compound years ago when John was not as high as his bicycle, really, these handlebars uh, cut the trails and have uh, used them for, for riding and hiking, you know, all over those, uh, those years. So, And we even do some hunting on those trails because there's a lot of two liters that show up that, that need to be uh, eradicated, as you, as you know, right? So yeah, anyway, we talked to you a little bit not too long ago uh, at uh, in uh, Sevierville. Had a good time. Talked about some different things uh, at the meet and greet. And uh, I do enjoy the meet and greets when we when we can do one. And uh, that's of course a great venue for one right there because it's uh, so large and it's in a great spot. And of course, since Buds is one of our sponsors, it works out great. Uh, they like for us to come and do one occasionally, and it gives us an opportunity to come and meet some of you all uh, occasionally. Had some people drive a long way, too. There's some really sick people. If you watch that, you, you learned that. What, Louisiana, Indiana, Michigan, uh, Virginia. Well, Virginia's not all that far, I guess. Depends on where you are in Virginia, Yeah, <laughs> from East Tennessee. Could be pretty close, or it could be a long haul. I drove across Virginia this summer. Uh, oh, man. Uh, you, you can uh, you can do some serious driving just getting uh, north and south or even east west in Virginia but anyway it was great seeing people and uh, talking to you and uh, in a gun shop I mean you know I mean does it get any better you know uh, people of like mind uh, gun nuts <laughs> uh, people of like mind who enjoy the shooting sports the hobby and we all gather in one spot. It's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. I mean, if you amble into almost any gun shop, you have a certain amount of that, don't you? If you're, if you're a shooter, you know what I mean. And if you're sociable at all, because uh, it doesn't take much to, to be in a gun shop and get into a conversation with somebody, right? Just depends on the gun shop. There are some gun shops where when you walk in, you wanna just turn around and walk back out, maybe pretty quickly. You don't feel very welcome. But, uh, but most of them are, are good and they're run by, by some, some good folks. So, you know, I'm just out here enjoying the fall ambiance, brisk weather, uh, just doesn't get any better. Doesn't get any better. I, some of you live in a part of the country where you don't get seasons. I, I realize that, not much of a season. Well, we definitely have our seasons here, as you see from the videos. I mean, we, we may post a video we did just a few weeks prior and, uh, you know, the foliage is totally different, totally different. And if we have something we post a couple of months later, it is really different, isn't it? So we don't worry about that. It's just, uh, it's just going to be different. And, uh, 
depending on when we we filmed it you know so kind of interesting and it does i hear from uh, folks overseas in the sandbox soldiers and uh i've had several of them tell me they enjoy watching the videos uh, for a lot of reasons but they also love to see the the seasons and the the trees and uh you know that the snow or just whatever we happen to have you know on the rain the the pretty colors of the leaves you know it's just uh reminds them of home of course so but anyway what else speaking of the season hopefully you caught some of the pumpkin activity lately here at the compound uh i tell you i i'm amazed every single year that so many people find it so odd you know that somebody would carve their pumpkin their jack-o-lantern with a firearm you know you would assume that that's what most people have been doing their entire lives but apparently not apparently not and uh it was kind of weird this year the uh, pumpkin carving went kind of viral uh or some years it, it, it people always like seeing that but it's it's just really strange isn't it uh how the internet works and, and whatever uh i guess it's got over two million views now just on that that silly video uh you know just a one run one cut uh <laughs> you know nothing video so you never know what people uh are interested in getting educated about i guess but I'm just glad that people, uh, you know, are are taking it to heart, and maybe they're learning their lesson and they're putting away the knives. Okay, getting a little sun through the tree. Hopefully the light's not too weird, but uh, you know, thought I'd just come out and do it outside. But uh, but anyway, yeah, the pumpkin carving is is a kind of a weird phenomenon that uh, that so many people are, are. I don't know. They're I don't know if they're fascinated. They're they're kind of perplexed, I think, that anybody would uh, do that, maybe with a firearm. Yeah. Of course, one thing about that, whenever you have a video that, that gets outside the, the normal audience, like pumpkin carving, you know, anybody's liable to, you know, search pumpkin carving, and of course, they're looking for, you know, uh, I don't know, some ideas on how to, how to uh, create their perfect jack-o'-lantern this year. And they come up on some guy in the woods shooting one with a gun. And, oh, a gun. Oh. And, you know, they get their panties all in a, in a, in a, in a wad and, and just uh, become trolls. You know, so you get a little bit of that, I noticed. But that's okay. I figure for every one of those, there's probably 10 or 20 that come in from outside maybe the shooting community and say, hey, that's cool. And maybe they look at some other videos and, and maybe they, I don't know, they learn something about firearms they didn't know or they... Uh, maybe they learn that firearms are not just something used in war or in gang warfare. I don't know. But anyway, we welcome all the new viewers that might have come in from uh, the pumpkin carving because it's all I know it's all over the place. Of course, that one is. Every year it seems to get out there pretty much, but some years it just takes off. It's kind of weird. Uh, I think it was on Tosh a few days ago. And uh, it's been on two or three different uh, shows on Fox News and the way I know that I've not seen it. They always ask permission At least they always ask permission whereas a lot of people don't Tosh didn't you know and didn't even give us credit But but some do and in a lot of different blogs and things. So uh, if you came from the pumpkin carving Avenue uh, Welcome, and I hope you hang around and maybe learn something about firearms and uh, you know that most of them out of the three to four hundred million firearms in this country are owned and used weekly by normal people, sensible people. I know it's hard to believe, but I'm really not even in a gang. I, I really am not. I don't have any colors. I'm not in a gang. Well, yeah, I am. I'm the, the mountain biking gang. <laughs> uh, yeah, no gang, no gang affiliation. I'm sorry. I know it, it, it ruins the narrative, uh, doesn't it, of, uh, of some people, but that's just the way it is so anyway pumpkin carving is kind of fun it uh you know I, and you know I, I guess it goes without saying we just do kind of what we want to do we've always done that and every now and then one of them just goes crazy but that's just the way we always carve the pumpkin and uh uh it's interesting when something goes viral the stuff you get oh man the contacts and everybody there's all these different i don't know websites or people that want to 
hey, we can take your viral video and do this and make lots of money for you with this viral video and all this kind of, I mean, it's really interesting when that happens. That's happened three or four times, you know, since we've been doing this and, you know, it's just crazy. But, uh, you know, of course I always say, no, no thanks. Uh, but what I was going to say, the thing is, uh, we don't really set out to do a viral video. I know there are, there, there are channels that, you know, that's kind of their main goal is to see what in the world they can do to create a viral video. You know, the whole world wants a viral video on YouTube, it seems like. Ironically, we, we don't even have that in our mind, but obviously we want to do videos people want to watch, you know, and we'd like to have viewers and subscribers and all that, but we don't really, that's not our primary focus. Um, because we have uh, we have this conversation every now and then, John and I, we have, what, 1,200 videos now, I think. And so we, you know, just through the accumulation of, of videos that we have done about firearms, most of them, right? Uh, the ones where I'm not riding a bike in the woods. But, I mean, we have about 1,200, I think. And, and so just the accumulation of views, every couple of three days we have the equivalency of a viral video. So I think we get about 400 uh yeah, 400,000 views a day, something like that, more or less. So every couple of days, two and a half days, we have, if a million views is a viral video, I don't know if that's a viral video, but but so all that takes care of itself just from the work we've done through the years. And so, uh, yeah, we're not worried about one video getting a million views. Wow, you know, it's like, so what, you know? So, I mean, not to sound cavalier about it, you know, we want views, we want people to come and watch what we're doing, obviously. But uh, we're not we're not uh, set out. That's not our main goal to create some crazy video that will that will dominate the planet for a few weeks or or years. Uh, how are you going to do that in the shooting world anyway? Pretty much, unless you do something really bizarre. And we don't want to do anything too bizarre. We just want to do normal things like trim trees, the things we normally do with firearms, and uh, carve pumpkins, and shoot targets. So we do have fun though, don't we? Hopefully, you can tell that. So what else was I going to, oh, well, no, the killing uh, pumpkin video. I hope you enjoyed that this year. We, uh, interesting, a lot of comments, people are coming up with ideas. Uh, and why didn't you do this? Or why? Uh, what was on, I just saw this morning. Why didn't you uh, use a chainsaw, I think, or something? Well, we used a chainsaw one year. What we're trying to do is something different each year. I don't think we have repeated any killing method in all the years we've been doing it. So we'd like to pick out about 10 different new ways to off to end a pumpkin's life okay so that's kind of the uh the, the thought process there in case you are new and you have missed the others now i always link to the others in the description so get back there and look at them and we've got I mean, we already have four or five things uh we're going to do next year probably we've got in our mind i got i got one i don't want to forget uh it's gonna be a good one i think if we have any pumpkins next year and uh so anyway we enjoy the fall and the, and the pumpkins uh it's kind of nice the transition between watermelons pumpkins it's, it's quite a natural transition we did a video on that one year which is one of my favorite videos uh where we shot some watermelons and then pumpkins just on a hill over there i could open well i could see if the trees weren't in the way and uh, did some slow-mo and stuff and uh, that was even before a really good camera i guess but it's one of my favorite to watch we actually stumble around and end up with some videos that i i actually enjoy watching you know john has made that comment too you know normally i don't know about you but if you make videos you see it watch it to make sure it's okay or whatever it's what you wanted to do and uh you don't go back and watch it over and over <laughs> well i don't really do that either but there are a couple of them that kind of even pull me in, you know, like the shooting the watermelons or, or, or some of that stuff with slow motion and, uh, no, I don't know. And then actually it, even a couple, I've gone back to look at something to see what I said in the video based on a comment I saw or something. And, and I'll, it'll be maybe the Henry rifle or something. And, you know, John's giving us all some really good gun porn, you know, as I'm yakking about it or whatever. <laughs> and I got, I just want to stay there and look at that gun or look at that, whatever it is. Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, I confess, I'm a gun nut, you know, so. And it wouldn't matter who did it, it's not just because we did it, it's just, oh man, that is a cool looking firearm, you know, so I'm just like you, I like, I like firearms. Uh, oh, and the killing uh, video, the, uh, whoops, pumpkin killing video. 
I hope you noticed who was shooting the Uzi at the uh, pumpkin. Yeah, Steve Lee. He actually had a cameo appearance in uh, that video. So uh, that was none other than the Australian, the famous Australian Steve Lee. He and his family visited for a, a day. It's really nice. Well, they were here for a couple, three days. We saw him a couple of times in Nashville. What else? We've Oh, we've been to Knob Creek since I've talked to you, I guess. We might have mentioned that in the in the radio show over at Bud's, but that was that was fun. That was fun. You owe it to yourself. I probably said this before uh, to make it to that thing one time if you can. If you live in the eastern part of the United States, just put it on your calendar. It's twice a year, and yeah, it's probably a good drive for you. But it uh, if you're a shooter, you really like firearms. You know, even if you're not a uh, uh, crazy about full auto. I mean, I enjoy full auto, but I'm not driven to it. Yeah, I mean, I sold the Uzi I had after 10 years, you know, told that story a lot of times. And I could, I could get one, I could obtain one full time and not have to rely on uh, uh, NC silencer, you know, and I could always have a select fire rifle or something, pistol, <laughs> whatever, uh, go through the process and everything. I'm not I'm not all that driven to do it and and of course partly is because I do have access to them so you know that that kind of satisfies most of my uh, full auto uh, Jones I guess that I get occasionally but uh, but they are fun and it's it's just the the atmosphere of it it's the event uh, that that's what's so unique and it's what I think you would enjoy even if you're not chopping it to bit to obtain a class 3 firearm uh, you'd enjoy it. It's, it's pretty cool, I have to say. It's uh, it's just one of those things, and I can I can just imagine someone who is an anti-gun, anti-freedom person. They have that orientation. If they were dropped down at the Knob Creek machine gun shoot, I'm looking at the monitor. I'm sorry about that. I was I was noticing people are doing that. I'm watching a video. I was as I wanted to make sure I was in the in the screen, you know, riding up on my bike. And I'm sorry, I quit. Uh, I'll try to quit doing that. Try to look at you, not at that person sitting beside you, okay? Uh, not that I'm a professional uh, with a camera, but I always notice that when people are doing that. I try not to do it. Um, so, but anyway, well, normally I don't have the thing turned where I can see it, you know, because John's doing that and uh, that's probably what his distraction. So I was sort of talking to myself there. That's what I was doing, okay? But Knob Creek, I mean, it would be the worst nightmare for some people. I mean, can you imagine if Diane Feinstein, if you could just take her and make her spend two hours there she would just oh man she'd never get over it she'd never get over it uh what else oh yeah what are the videos high point high point yeah uh man i hope i don't offend you i will i already have if you own a bunch of high points i guess I was not really trying to be a gun snob in that video. I've had a few people come in about one every three, four days will pop in there and just give it, give it to me really hard about being a gun snob, seems like. Uh, but I thought I kind of, I mean, we, yeah, I had some fun and, you know, we did the little uh, uh, thumbnail picture for it, even before we did the video, though I'd have a little, in case we wanted to use it, just have a little fun with it, you know, because... I mean, high points are that firearm that everybody loves to hate, you know, makes fun of, but then most of us realize they actually do work pretty well. And, you know, it's, I don't know what else it would be like. Some car, smart car, or something that people make fun of, but they realize, okay, probably works, you know, and some people like them. But that's just the way it is. Generally speaking, I, and part of my philosophy and mission is not to bash other people's firearms. You know, that's, that's one thing I do. It's not my place to bash some firearm you have, love it, you know, and all that sort of thing. But then by the same token, uh, I, I think some of the people that really got after me didn't really listen to everything I've said. And they probably haven't seen all the videos. One of the reoccurring themes is that I, I really do. I mean, again, high points tend to work. Some people love them. They got several of them. But I still say, uh, I mean, they are put together on the cheap, though, you know. And someone pointed out in a comment on the video, that it's like, uh, would you buy the cheapest uh, climbing rope if you're going to climb Mount Everest? Which is a good analogy, and you could come up with lots of them. The cheapest motorcycle tires, or you know, whatever, just because they're a real bargain and they'll probably do okay. You know, uh, but 
So that's kind of where I'm coming from. I, I still think, uh, even though they work, it's a good company. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna save money and uh, save up some more money and get a better gun. It's just that simple, yeah. You know? And uh, and I really do advise people. I have been advising people to do that, and not not just high point. I'm just don't buy the cheapest gun you can find if you really need a firearm. Get you a two hundred dollar shotgun to get you through if you don't have anything for home defense. But then, or a hundred and fifty dollar shotgun. You can get a shotgun, a junker that will work probably a hundred and a quarter. You know, if you hit some gun shows, but. Uh, you know, save up some money, you know, uh, it doesn't take all that much. You can, you can get a better gun for just a little more. That, that's my point on all that. And I've been guilty of it too. I have, you know, when I think back of some of the firearms I traded, it all comes down to impatience. You know, most of us are not patient, especially if we're younger, uh, to save a little more or do without something so you can afford that Smith & Wesson or that m &P, that Glock or whatever it is. Uh, even a used one or whatever. Uh, you know, the, some of the guns I've traded over the years, and all of us have, it is from that impatience. When I think of some of the pythons I had, Colt pythons, they're worth so much now. I've, I've had two of them I paid $250 for. And beautiful guns, six inch blue and a uh, four inch uh, stainless. I think I had a six inch uh, nickel at one time for a little while. And I had another one, forgot what configure, I don't know. But, you know, the only reason I don't have them, it, well, I like a Smith better. We've talked about that before. But it's because you've got that money in it and you see another firearm you like, right? And you just can't wait to buy that other firearm. And so you end up selling that or trading it. And so, so we're all we're guilty of, excuse me, of that impatience, uh, but still. Yeah, what can I say? We're having some fun with it, and uh, and 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 I, I you know, obviously most people agree with me. Uh, I think on that point and on about the high points, and everything else. But I still don't want to uh, like bash people, and certainly don't want to make fun of people who uh, if that's all they can afford. But again, that's my point. It's not all they can afford. That's my stance. I don't think that's all. Almost anybody can afford. It's, it's just a matter of how you manage your patience, your money, and that sort of thing is what it comes down to. It's not, a, it's not a, an issue of uh, like picking on people that can only afford a high point. Okay, I mean, that's, I understand all that. We're talking about people who, who can only get a couple hundred dollars together to buy a firearm this week. Okay, again, buy a $125 shotgun junker if you have to, if you just need a defensive gun or something. Uh, put a little more money together, find a used other kind of gun. A couple of people said get a used high point and your argument doesn't carry weight because you can get a used high point for a hundred dollars. Well, that again is the point. You're already buying a really cheap gun. Do you want one that's used? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to make it. I don't mean to make a bigger deal out of that. That's just something that I, uh, I really, I, I believe that, you know, I think uh, if you save a little bit more money, trade something, sell something, trade another gun you have or something and, and maybe get a better gun. But then again, if you don't think, and I guess that's where a lot of it comes from because some of the people I heard from actually, I've got three of them or I've got four of them and they work great on this. So if you're, again, if you're buying four and five high points and I probably, I can't talk to you probably. So, but anyway, we were just trying to have some fun in the video and, uh, and I think we did. What else have we been doing? Well, I've been biking. I don't know if you saw the biking uh, video I put on Facebook. That's the first time I stuck a video on Facebook. I just held my camera up and as I was out on the road, I filmed a bike, a little bike video there as I was riding through some beautiful countryside. And uh, a fellow in Ohio, a viewer, offered to build me a bike that would fit me, a road bike, uh, a Surly, and he had extensions on it and everything. It was really, really cool. I sent him a firearm since then. I mean, he was, he's, but he didn't want anything. I mean, it was, he just wanted to do it. And I drove up and picked it up and it said Village Cyclery in uh, Yellow Springs, um, Ohio. I don't want to know why it was called Yellow Springs back in the day. I can use my imagination though. But anyway, great bike. So great bike. I don't get on the road very much. Uh, I don't like the traffic and they don't like bikers either, of course. 
Uh, I'd rather be in the woods like this, but I like to get out occasionally when there's no traffic, places where there's no traffic, and uh, on greenways. There's some nice greenways around. I just do it for the exercise. I'm not looking to be, uh, you know, well, I start to say Lance Armstrong. I guess we shouldn't use that term anymore, right? Or that name. But uh, but I'm not looking to be a racer or anything. Well, you can tell when when I get on a bike, I wear whatever I'm wearing basically around the house. So uh, on the road, other than a colored shirt, so people might be less likely to run over me. But on the road, but I just get on a bike and, and ride. That's one thing I like about it. You don't really have to do much. Just get on it and go. You know, ride around, especially on the mountain bike. This one, by the way, is a Trek. I, I, I got this one new, oh, back early in the summer, and uh, it fits me better than any mountain bike I've ever had. It's the biggest Trek made, and I didn't really expect it to be that much better, but uh, it is, and, and I have thoroughly enjoyed it this summer. I've worked off a few pounds, and I, I've just enjoyed the bike, and I'm going to ride it through the winter, too, unless it's just horrible. So you might see me over here again in the woods on the bike, right? So, and I don't have my clock with me, so I don't know how long I'm taking, so I better uh, shut up, I guess. What's going on uh, in the future here? Uh, go what we got coming up. Uh, since you're crazy enough to watch me talk to you from a bicycle in the woods, uh, we've got an AR, okay, yeah, another AR, but it's from a local uh, maker up in Clarksville here, Just this is a stone's throw for me. Some uh, soldiers and vets own the company, Tactical Edge, and they're making some pretty nice ARs. Uh, just a real functional AR that uh, you can go to war with. They call it the warfighter. I mean, these guys, uh, several of them have been to war, and they that's what they're trying to do, make a gun, make a, yeah, a rifle that'll take a beating. And uh, they've basically taken the Daniel Defense and tried to make it better in some ways. It kind of resembles one, like uh, you know, like the one I have, whatever, I forget the model number, but it's a, not the SOCOM, but it has that kind of look, the rails and everything. You'll see it soon. What else? Uh, oh, we might see another Henry rifle, uh, iron frame coming up, you never know. Ridge Runner from Taylor & Company, which is a big old takedown uh, 4570. P220, 10 millimeter. Uh, I think I put a picture of that on Facebook. Uh, got a little 22 Rough Rider from Heritage. I've had a lot of requests for that. So anyway, some some different things coming up, and uh, and who knows what else? Uh, maybe some different sorts of education for your edification. Okay, to expand your horizons, to learn you something, right? <laughs> Oh, I'm getting silly. I've been writing too much. Uh, so anyway, I'm glad you happen to be over here in the woods. Uh, I've got to, you know, ask you to leave now because we can't have, uh, you know, visitors to the compound, of course. But uh, while you're here, though, I do want to thank you again for, for watching and for putting up with us and for uh, sticking with us, for, uh, for, for helping us any way you have. And a lot of you have uh, supporting our sponsors. Uh, just all the all the good things you do you help me keep the channel clean you help me uh keep a lot of the craziness out uh you know it uh i mean i've got some of it filtered but y'all are really good at uh you know answering people straightening them out obviously new people when they come on and comment you know something they don't understand some obvious question that anybody's been around a little bit would know you know i see a lot of people answering those as i skim through and uh is because I'm, I'm really trying to get as many questions as I can answered on Facebook if they're if they fall in that category something I need to go to and answer a lot of things I can if it's in an FAQ video or if it's just uh, stuff that you know it's just a Google click away you know you need to go to Google for that uh, and I don't I can't answer gunsmithing questions I mean I told you about that in front of Walter White's house remember FAQ number whatever it was <laughs> Should have been in the 50s because we we're at Monument Valley on 54, which was searching somebody's YouTube channel. I remember that one because I recommend it often when people ask me if we have a video on something, right? Uh, yeah, and by the way, if you're one of those people, new people, go to FAQ number 54 and uh, you'll learn how to search a channel and see if someone has a video on something. Because as I've told you before, 
most of the videos are not in a playlist. I got way behind back at about two or three hundred videos, and now we have twelve hundred. So anyway, appreciate y'all watching, and uh, I'll probably see you again in a few weeks. I don't know if I'll be in the woods or not, but uh, either way, you'll see me on your computer screen or your TV or wherever you watch strange videos, okay? Glad you could come out here. I'm glad you were here to ambush me as I rode the trail, okay? And uh, I'm sorry we didn't have the Life is Good song uh, out here in the woods. Maybe I'll sing it as I ride away. How would that be? Would that just make your day? Life is good. Always shooting down in the woods. <laughs>